Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Mark Cabrera, and we're here to talk about finding confidence, particularly in real estate and also in your life and how it can apply. So why do we need confidence? It's to build contacts, to market. And I think if you want to actually market, there's two ways to market. Efficiency, efficiently and effectively. The efficient part, we don't deal with the people. We deal with systems and processes. So when you're looking at that, right, you have to be, once you start making a certain amount of income, you have to be confident enough. When I say confident enough, you have to believe in yourself enough that you can make it to the next level. The biggest problem we all have is lack of information. See, when I first started my first four years of this career, nobody showed me anything. That's why it took four years. If someone showed me the first year, it would be nice, then I would have actually been taken off already, right? But the fact is nobody showed me in the first four years. Not until I had a mentor who actually showed me how the process works. And I still remember to this day what he said to me, when you focus on relationships, money will chase you. And I was like, Man, that sounds pretty philosophical, man. Well, you're confused now. <laughs> you know, money will chase you. Well, it did. In, I never had issues with figuring out how to make income in this business. And I made it in droves. I mean, what most people make in a year, sometimes I make it in a month. I mean, it's insane money. But at the same time, it's a bottomless pit. When you start, you know, when you go through a divorce and you're actually like go through like this whole downhill spiral of emotional craziness, you still have to be able to manage to separate that from yourself and figure out exactly how you can compartmentalize your emotion. Because whatever you are is what you sell. This is, this is it. This is who you guys are. So when people come up to you, they trust and like you because that's the reason why they're going to work with you. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Um, the effectiveness of marketing is, is what brings in confidence. So, which means basically when I'm influencing you, the more I know I can influence you and then I'm more confident I can influence her. And then the more confident I can influence her, I can influence the next person over there. So it's, it's a chain reaction as you grow into the business because the biggest problem people have is if I cannot work, convince you to actually go a particular direction that I would like, right? It's because I'm not confident enough for me to be able to do that. We have our natural, what they call limiting beliefs. And that's one of the things that holds us back is when we were raised, we were told what we can and cannot do. Isn't that about right? You grow up, they tell you, you can't do that. Yeah, no, you can You get more no's than yes. What if we were raised, and by the way, if I were to recommend a, a movie that will actually exemplify confidence, is that movie that's out there right now. It's called King Richard. Have you guys seen this movie yet? It's a story about Serena Williams and Venus Williams. The best tennis players in the world, it's their story. And if you watch that movie, it became my top five movie, to be honest with you, actually. I never thought I was going to find any better movies that I've already seen. It became one of my top five movies because it directly relates on how the father made sure that her two, his two children never had limiting beliefs. And if any reporter ever said anything to get them to doubt themselves, the father stops the interview right in the middle of the interview. And the reporters hate him for this because he, you know, that's why they call him King Richard because he thinks like he's a king because he's got the two best players in the world. But guess what? I didn't know that they grew up in Compton in the worst part of town of Los Angeles, you know, where all the shooting happens and the drug deals and all these bad things happen to people over there, right? That's where they grew up. And he had them play tennis where the wealthy people in LA were playing at. 
So it was quite interesting because what you see is a big disparity. And in that movie, it also talks about like it's a Cinderella story, right? And it's a wonderful story because it's real. This is exactly how they made it to the top. And if you look at the best tennis players in the world, like of all time, that's Serena, who actually won six Grand Slam titles, with seven Grand Slam, six years, nobody beat him. Not even once in any competition or major events. And then you have Venus Williams, who actually won five or six Wimbledons, right? But they were teenagers and they didn't even played pros yet, and they were asked, how do you think, what do you think of getting into the professional? Oh, I'm not, no, I'm not just going to go into the professionals. I'm going to win Wimbledon. They knew exactly the direction they're taking. I'm going to win Wimbledon. How can you be sure? I know because I can beat every single person in front of me that I ever get to play with. It feels like it's cockiness, right? No, it's the limiting beliefs that was taken away from them. And they had unlimited potential because their minds were so focused on becoming the best player in the world. Well, guess what? The two sisters, at some point, they were competing against each other. Who is going to be the best player in the world? This is how good this movie was. And this is actually a really good example of how we could raise our kids with confidence to actually teach them confidence. This movie actually exemplifies that because when they, uh, there was a time when they were winning, a, uh, they won a competition or a match, both of them won, and they started bragging and that kind of stuff. And the father stops in the middle of the, the road and he said, go get, your, go get some ice cream over there. And he was getting ready to drive two and a half miles, have them walk home. Because he was, he's like, I'm going to teach these kids a lesson that they can never brag about their winning. That they always have to stay humble. And then when they got home, they end up watching this movie called Cinderella. And you see, she became a queen. But look, she's still the same person. She never changed. That's what people want us to see no matter where we are in our career. Whether you're all the way on the top or you're starting out, you always have to be genuine and authentic and be who you are. Right? But that's what we missed actually growing up. And I know all of us had our own share of of this where we're being put down or we're not good enough or you know you get those things take that off and turn that around i'm telling you it's a huge difference when you actually get to 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 see that attract and engage this is what we i already explained to you guys you will attract and you will engage with more people when they know you know or you project yourself as someone who knows what they're doing we execute with discipline. This is another thing. See, the reason why our business, when we first start, it's hard to really make it take off. It's because you don't have a plan that goes all the way down to the last minute of every hour that you spend. One thing I learned, and this is not something for me, is if you want to make a certain amount of income, Break it down to a full-time career. If you're full-time in this or, or part of how many hours you plan to work and look at it from that hourly rate. I was just showing, a, 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 I was coaching a, an agent who's done very well this year. I think he did 16 or 18 transactions this year where he did four last year. Okay, big difference. It's four to 18. I mean, that's basically. So I start, I've, I've been coaching him for almost a year. And one thing I told him, I said, okay, you need to go to the next step, the next level. Because what made a difference was when he met me, he was telling me, oh, I'm actually doing 10 calls a day. I was like, no, that's not, that's not going to create the momentum that we need. I need you to make 25 calls a day. And it's like, what? 25 calls a day? Where am I going to get all these people? If you don't have enough people, then go, get, go out there and start meeting people. That's the only way you're going to actually get more people. So that's what he did. He actually started gaining his database. He was working... Uh, at a uh, at a place before that he met a lot of people as a personal trainer. So he started actually calling all those people that he really don't know, but he knows, you know, he's met. And next thing you know, business starts coming in and it came in. But here's the thing. It's the discipline that I told him. I said, you really want to actually make a lot of income in this business? You want to hit your numbers? 
the season numbers is somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and from four transactions, he wants three hundred, right? So I was like, you're not gonna get there right now. You could, but the one thing I can tell you: start with that twenty-five, and if you could do it every day, and if you actually miss, you better make it up the next day. And if you actually miss twice, you better stay the rest of the day in the office until you get those calls. Why? Because that's what it will take for you to get that three hundred thousand dollars a year income. And I told him, I said, and if you miss, I tell you one thing, when your desire turns into an obsession, this is where you find success. So if you're not able to sleep because you didn't make your 25 phone calls, then you're getting there. You're heading the right direction because you need to hold yourself accountable for the plan that you set out yourself to do. So if you don't want to actually do this kind of, you know, this kind of massive change that it takes for you to succeed on a consistent basis, then don't set your goal at 300. Simple as that, right? But he sets his goal at 300. So this is the numbers. I broke it down for him. This is what it will take for you to get there. So he's on his way there. Next year, he said, I just talked to him the other day. He's like, Mark, I know I can hit my numbers next year. And I said to him, I know you could, but you need to make one adjustment now. So what is it? Well, those everything else outside of prospect, prospecting should be given to an assistant. But I have to pay somebody for that. It's like, of course. I mean, if you get a, an assistant, even a part-time assistant, let's say $500, right? Just to actually help you with administrative, putting things together for you, like, you know, and then you re all you do is review, then you save hours of time. And it's like, but I write my own offers. I write my own listing. I was like, great. Where are you going to find time? You just had a baby and, you, and now you're actually writing your own contracts and then you're doing this and you're doing that. And you're gonna, not going to have enough time. You're going to do what you did this year, next year. Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and you're expecting different results, right? If you're doing the same thing right now and you did, let's say, 16 or 18, great. So I broke it down for him. I told him, hey, listen. How many transactions, how many hours did it take you to do three transactions? And he said, oh, it took me 30 hours. I said, great. How much would you making, be making on that? $33,000 in one month. It's like, great, you know that's someone's salary. He's like, yeah, I know. Well, you did it in 30 hours, so how many, how many per hour is that? $1,100. Okay, it's $1,100, great. Now, if you're looking at $500 that you're paying an assistant to free up your time and you divide that by 30 hours, that's $16 an hour. So now it's subtracted from $1,100, the $16 an hour where you're making $1,100 for your time, right? You're probably somewhere like $1,084 an hour. So what I would like you to do is take out $1,084 out of your bank and burn it because that's what you're doing right now can you do that it's like oh man mark that's crazy we we're gonna burn 1083 i was like yeah but find out how it feels because that's what you're doing without knowing that you're doing this and it's like okay mark you're right i'm gonna pay someone 500 dollars a month just so i can free up some time and that's exactly what he did but had he not been given any advice like with me I learned that from a book. I didn't learn that from my mentor. As a matter of fact, my mentor came up to me and said, oh my gosh, Mark, you got a cleaning lady that cleans your house twice a week and you have a nanny that actually watches your kid. I was like, live in nannies? I wouldn't even have that. I was like, yeah, because I have to, I have to assist you and sell houses at the same time. How long would you expect me to actually have time for that? So for, to free up my time, this is what it takes. I free up my time. So the only time I'm spending is prospecting, right? Or spending time with my family. That's it. One or the other until I hit my goal. When I hit my goal, then I can back up a little bit and start making the money, what make the money, make the money for me, right? But the point I'm trying to make to you guys is it starts with the whole idea that you need to be disciplined enough and confidence help with that. Because when you know what you're doing and you know what direction you're going, right? It's much easier to be disciplined because you have a routine, you have a, a regimen, you have a personal trainer that goes to the gym, tells you to do two, three reps of this and five reps of this, right? 
it's much easier because you know you have a direction. So you're more confident that you can do it more often. So this helps a lot when you're confident on that. Create value and exuding confidence. I mean, creating value is natural. I mean, anybody that you work with, see the difference between a lot of people, the way we were programmed, because from elementary to high school to college, if you really think about it, we were trained to work for someone else. Which class did you guys take that trained you to work for yourself? Never. Hardly ever. I never seen even my business class teaches you how to work for someone else. Your accounting class, the same thing to work for someone else, right? So you got to reprogram that part. The difference between an employee and a business owner, okay, is time, money for an exchange for an employee. You put enough time, they give you money, right? Our business, if you're confident to make money in this business, is time value. I get paid thousands of dollars per hour, like the one I woke up in like a month ago, right? I got paid like 20 something thousand dollars for it to do two hours of work. It's like $12,000 an hour, not bad. <laughs> so, so time value, we don't get to see as an employee. What we get to see as an employee is time and money. So my last year with my mentor, my second to the last year, he offered me a $200,000 salary to work for him. But guess what? I was so confident. No, thank you. What? You're turning down a salary, Mark? This is $200,000 a year. You know CEOs don't even make, some CEOs don't even make this kind of money. I was like, absolutely. I understand that. I understand that not everybody makes this kind of money. But guess what? That year, that year when I turned that down, I made $300,000. That's confidence. That's belief in yourself. And at that time, I didn't have any assistance. I was working like 60 hours a week, closing 18 transactions in one month. I mean, crazy stuff. Actually, it's kind of funny because we were competing. My boss told me like, oh, see, I did 15. I know you cannot beat my, my closings, number of closing I did. He did 15. So like a few months later, I did 18 transactions. Like, oh my gosh, he cut me a $92,000 check in one month. It's like, Mark, nobody at 33 years old make this kind of money, right? And I look at him like, yeah, I know, but I don't know anybody that makes 92,000 because this is a 50-50 split. The other 92 is going to you <laughs> and you didn't do anything <laughs> at this point. But the point I'm trying to make to you guys is that confidence is what brought me to that level. Now, you have my ex-wife, okay, who tells me, Mark, you don't have any time for us. I was like, okay, then I have to quit and actually go on my own. No, you cannot make it. Remember when you quit back then? You actually couldn't make any money for four years and we didn't make any income? You forgot that about, you forgot that already? And I'm like, okay, remember I was telling you, people, the closest people to you, man, they shoot you. I mean, <laughs> they, they shoot your confidence down to the bottom, you know? So I told them, I said, oh, okay, well, you go, honey, go, go on vacation, go visit your family in Europe, you know? So flies over to Europe. While she was over there, I quit my dad. I quit my mentor and started my, my own company. Starting in April of 2004, 2004. April 2004 till the end of the year, right? This person has no confidence. That's probably why he never, it, it was not meant to work because at some point I cannot be around people that are not actually gonna be helping my confidence and I don't wanna live like that. I don't wanna live when people actually like tell you you cannot do things, you cannot do things and constantly, constantly. And eventually you might start to believe it. So, what ended up happening is on that first year, April to the end of the year, I made $420,000. How can that be possible? Because what I learned is that anything is possible when you believe in it. It sounds crazy. Some people tell me I'm crazy, but it doesn't matter. The following year, 
$920,000, 92 transactions. And the craziest thing about it, my first full year, put 100 transactions on the board. All the agents, you know, like this, they see my board when they come in. Hey, Mark, da, da, da. oh, look, you put 100. <laughs> Man, you must be dreaming. How much you made last year? I said 420. He's like, okay, well, that's 100 transactions. There's no way you're going to do that. I said, okay. I hit 92, and sure enough, that agent come up to my office. Look, you see, you did 92. I was like, yeah, I know. Did you do 92? <laughs> did you even come close to it? Because what I believe is what I believe, right? And what I believe is what I can achieve. It's not what everybody thinks. That's why sometimes when, 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 uh, when I have to create something, I don't want to listen or hear or, or read somebody else's work. I want to do my own work. So I don't want to be influenced by anybody. So I just sit down and actually do, you know, like writing songs. I don't want to be influenced by anybody. So at some point I wanted to learn how to write songs. I had to learn to play guitar and I, had to, I did it all on my own because the way I look at it, it's more rewarding, but I'm confident that anything that I pick up at some point I will learn, even if I fail several times, because I'm willing to fail. Understand something, nothing comes easy if otherwise everybody will be doing it. So your confidence in yourself of being able to achieve certain things is really a reprogramming of your brain that comes way back when and all the people that's around you, that whether they support you or they don't. So hang out with people that are successful. And my rule was I hang out with my mentor for long enough, it might rub off on me. <laughs> I might make the kind of money he made. And at, by the time I left, actually uh, in 2006, he came in number six in the whole world for Remax, $2.6 million in commission. You tell me how many people can do that. I mean, that's not even touchable. I mean, not, I, know, I don't know a lot of people that can do that, except when I actually went to conference and there was like over 100 people lined up and I had the smallest award making $350,000, the last person getting the award, I'm like, because any, anybody who made over 100000 to two fifty, they were in a lunch. They didn't even make it to the dinner. <laughs> I made it to the dinner, but I was one of the last ones picking up the award, right? But it's all scale, right? But you know what I get out of that? Is I get to hang out with the best people out there. And that's what you got to do. That's why I don't understand people. But then, but then I get people that go into the coaching program and then they don't show up half the time. I'm like... What's the point? I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to be part of that activity. I mean, I only want to actually see people succeed in their careers. I'm not in the business of actually letting people linger, hoping they sell a house. Okay. I'm not in that kind of business. The point I'm trying to make to you is your confidence is key to be able to actually attain everything that you need to attain. If, if really you believe that you can do it. Otherwise, if you don't believe it, half the time you won't show up to it. That's just the way things are. That's human, human nature. That's behavior.